On September 1, 1987, S. Brian Wilson began a protest at the Concord Naval Weapons Station near Oakland, California. That's one of the places that send out the weapons that have killed or injured tens of thousands of people in Central America. Brian delivered a letter to the base commander telling him that on that day he'd begin using his body to block the trains carrying those weapons. Brian Wilson, former high school jock, former Air Force security officer in Vietnam, former dairy farmer who'd received a commendation for his work with the traumatized veterans of Vietnam, was run over that day. He'd put himself in the place of the people of Central America, and in doing so, he opened up the deepest truths of human existence. Brian trusted that even greater than the power of a speeding train is the power of truth and love. He showed a new kind of heroism, the kind that may just bring the world back from the brink of self-destruction. Five percent of the people of the world live in the United States, but we consume 40 percent of the resources of the world. We have become used to thinking that we have a right to all that we have, no matter what damage we do to the earth or to other people. We have become detached and disconnected from reality. We have become detached from the earth. We have become detached from the feelings and lives of people elsewhere if it interferes with our right to maintain our lifestyle and standard of living. I would submit to you that we're on a course leading to inevitable annihilation. Martin Luther King said, the issue is not between violence and nonviolence, it's between nonviolence and non-existence. The course we're on in the first world is a course of ultimate destruction. Do we want to be part of this course of ultimate destruction or do we want to be part of hope and affirmation and justice for all people of the earth and for the earth itself without which we cannot live? Yes, I'm talking about a nonviolent revolution of consciousness. A consciousness that is able to understand how we're all inextricably connected to each other on this earth and to the earth itself. And if we violate those fundamental principles, we do so at our own peril. Yes, we can continue to live in this delusion and the denials of reality because it's painful. It's frightening. Sometimes it's terrifying. How can we continue as a civilization of we the people if we have to do it at the expense of people all over the world? I challenge all of you to think, but more importantly to feel in your heart how you might be able to act in such a way so that the world can live in peace and justice. It's not going to happen magically, and I think it's not going to happen by relying on these political structures and institutions in Washington. I think we're gonna to have to wage peace in the most extraordinary ways, whether our government wants it or not. You will know in your heart what to do, but I know that without a nonviolent revolution of consciousness, we will not survive as a civilization or as a planet. And what more glorious goal and value do we want than peace for all people? And so I look forward to working together with you all to build a new society, a society that understands that we are not worth more and they are not worth less, and that we will be willing to pay the price and take the risks to wage peace with all fellow and sister human beings.